So I had a young student. Um, we were homeschoolers. We, I was the homeschool art teacher for our community. And we um, often had students like this who had learning disabilities, either autism or ADHD or um, dyslexia. And this particular young man had, had both ADHD and dyslexia, that he was not thriving in the academic left brain skills at all. So his mom brought him to my studio and I made her do art too. She was very good too. And he thrived, especially at sculpture, but also drawing and painting. He started winning awards. I was uh, um, entering my students' work in a, a community youth art competition. And he got his confidence built up with having success as a, in the arts that enabled him to really work through his disabilities mentally to graduate from high school. And so his family was just thrilled with that. But then he had a traumatic brain injury. His uh, a brain infection caused him to get a stroke and he became paralyzed on the right side of his body. So here he is, 18 years old, paralyzed. He, he couldn't talk. He could walk. And his right hand was trying to curl into a ball. And he was in the hospital for four months while they did therapy on him. As soon as he could get out, he still couldn't talk. He could kind of shuffle as far as a walk with a walker, you know, pull his right side of his body. And here he came back into the studio and he had, now he had a plastic skull. Okay. This is a traumatic, traumatic time for this young man. And I thought, okay, let's just teach him to draw left-handed. And he learned to draw and paint and write left-handed in really a very quick amount of time. Now, I'm not a scientist or even an art therapist. I'm an artist and an art teacher, okay? I didn't know the science behind it then, but I saw this working. And to the point where I got a call from his neurosurgeon who said, you know, I've never called somebody's art teacher before. <laughs> what are you doing with David? Because uh -huh. he's stronger with his weak hand than I am, and I'm a surgeon. And he's getting healing on the right side of his body. You know, as we were just talking about the plasticity of the brain, he said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. I'm like, okay, you know, he did. Well, eventually he got to where he could talk, he could walk, and now he's living a life where he, you wouldn't know he has a plastic skull and what he's been through. He's still stronger with his left hand than his right hand, um, but his family knows that without art in his life, he would not have received the kind of restoration that he needed mentally, emotionally, and physically. So I, I started studying the science because I'm like, wow, what happened here? Well, you know, I started learning about neural connections, the plasticity of the brain. We have so much more potential than most of us have realized because of the things you're describing, either education or somebody's words. What has hindered you? What has hindered you from your fullness, operating in the fullness of who you're meant to be? It's, it's partly an identity crisis of self-expression we're not allowed to be angry we're not allowed to say this we're not we're not we're, we're so pc oriented that we don't even know how to express ourselves in a way that can bring healing and wellness to us and contribute to the human experience you know <laughs> not putting people down i don't mean that you know i don't mean that but actually just being real yeah no that's very beautifully put and it's such a great example because we all have an inner fire we all have that inner desire to create and be expressive of whatever is within us whether it's good bad ugly you know our natural selves or our program selves whatever it wants to get out that inner child wants to play that whatever is inside wants to come out pressure can only exist within a container and build up so much before it absolutely has to burst out but most people try to keep it in and don't express themselves. And it's interesting, this example of someone kind of cracking the dam of getting that creative outlet, allowing that pressure to release, allowing whatever's pent up to just start pouring out. And then all fronts of themselves starting to heal after that, because yeah. this person with their hand may have felt empty or less able or less worthy or worthwhile or not able to accomplish anything anymore and the body will do as the mind instructs our mind can be our best friend or our worst enemy and depending on which thoughts it's thinking and feeding our body and then 
for this person to just break that negative thought pattern cycle and start using their left hand. Well, not only is they now forming new neural connections that were never there and strengthening them, but they're just breaking that perhaps negative thought loop of I am damaged. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, all of a sudden it's, oh, I can do it. Look what I am doing. Look how I am growing. And now the body's just happy. The, the mind is happy. The body's experiencing joy and love and empowerment. It's true. His mom, interestingly, of those four months that he was in the hospital, she started, we would call it now a blog, but she would write these long emails to her friends and family in her circle. And she always had humor in it. There was a gift in her that became discovered through this incredibly tragic situation with her younger son and and these these we all cried we laughed and cried through everybody's blocks it was like her way to deal with this this going on with her son and and the i we all look forward to what happened this week with david and, and this you know either it's either it's about doctors or nurses or meds or what they were trying or you meeting somebody in the hallway and falling down you know all kinds of things that what they say humor is tragedy plus time you know so she was <laughs> she had an ability to express what what he was going through what they were going through those four months in ways that just really touch so many people because writing and exp is another way of expression and it's it's so cool when we can relate to people's struggles through what we're expressing and that's part of the beauty we create community through wow you you expressed it this way and i could relate to what you're expressing you know we're making we're touching and the best art touches it is beautiful but it also moves us and that's that's what i try to tell my students what moves you what when you're flipping through this 600 page book i've read with 1800 images what stopped you what stopped your scroll what, what did you look at and say, wow, how did someone do it? If you enjoyed this clip, you'll love the full conversation I had with Karen, where we dive deeper into the importance of creative expression and the healing power art can have on our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. It's a really great conversation. Click the link in the description to check it out.